Hello, my friends. Um, this is Marco, the Hetero guy. And, uh, well, today I'm going to try to fix. So this just arrived to me uh, on the mail. This is a um, external Macintosh uh, disk drive, a uh, floppy disk drive. This is the M0130 model. And uh, basically this is for the older uh, monoblock Macs like uh, the Mac Plus. I think it also works for the uh, older ones like the 128 for example. Not entirely sure. So it uses this uh, specific port here. Uh, I tried it on my Plus but uh, it, it doesn't load the disk correctly and makes all sorts of noises. So uh, something is not working as expected inside. So I'm going to try to fix it. I do have another floppy drive from uh, an older like SE that uh, is just a floppy drive the SE has long gone so I will eventually try to swap the SE uh, floppy drive with this one here if this one is uh, you know beyond repair so let's um, I will also like uh, clean up the case the case is actually in very good shape no major scratches or anything it's a little bit yellowed which is expected some scuffs and marks which um, I'm going to show you the method that I use. I basically use the magic eraser uh, sponge and it does like uh, miracles in uh, plastics like this. So I'm going to disassemble this. I'm going to take off the plastics. I'm going to, you know, wash and uh, try to use the magic eraser on the plastics. See how uh, much better can I get this to be. And then I will try to fix the component itself like uh, the actual electronics. Uh, see if I can actually do it. So let's uh, let's disassemble this and see uh, how we can eventually. Let's check what's inside and uh, the state of everything. So to disassemble this, it's only like apparently only um, six screws, like two on top, two in the middle, and two on the bottom here. So it should be easy enough. So let's get on with this. So I have here my screwdriver that I love. So let's uh, get the proper header for this, which I think might be this 3.5 inches might be enough to do it. Yeah, maybe the four. The four might be a better option here. Yeah. So let's disassemble this. So one screw off. Six, uh, five to go. Two. At least they are fairly easy to remove. And let me just put this aside so I can get more space and for the final ones here so this one so as far as I can tell like nobody accessed this before I mean internally uh, the screws look integral like uh, they don't look damaged or you know there is no marks or anything that will tell me otherwise thing is I have no clue how to actually separate the case from <clears throat> Yeah, you have to be really careful here not to break anything. Again, especially with the, the plastics, they tend to be very brittle due to the age. Like this is a floppy drive from like the 80s, maybe 84 or so. As you can see, like it's not apparently not very straightforward. Again, like I really don't want to force anything, and I need to make sure that there are no additional screws hidden, maybe behind 
you know, underneath the, the feet here. Apparently there isn't. Okay. Yeah, great. So this part here is off. Again, like uh, the plastics are in very good shape, only a little bit dirty, but uh, no breaks or anything. Like all the tabs are here. Like, yeah, it's very good shape. So let's try to remove this assembly here. So let's get power. Yeah, it should be fairly straightforward. Yeah, perfect. So again like the plastics the other side of it it's also like in perfect shape like uh yeah here yeah it's only dirt like uh maybe a spider thought it was a good idea to make a nest here apparently like here you see uh just cleaning it up should be good to go very old spider yeah it's a little bit rusty here yeah, it doesn't look too great, to be honest, like, uh, I'm not sure if the focus is going to be our friend here, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't look too great, you see, I don't know if I can savage this, so I would have to basically remove it from the, the assembly and check it to see whether or not this can be salvaged. So I have no clue how to actually remove it from the assembly. Hopefully it's only going to be this. So let me see if I can remove the, the harness. Okay, that was easy. So let me just remember, remind myself. So this is the upper. Yeah, it's actually fairly straightforward. So it should be okay. So this is, so I'm going to put this aside and let me also put this away. Okay. So let's see. What can be done here? So let me see if I can, just by removing this screw here. Yeah, apparently it might work. Perfect. So just a single screw and uh, it's free from the, the metal assembly. So this is the hard drive. It is apparently in good condition. Like I don't see any major mechanical or you no, know, like the board looks fine. So maybe just some cleaning uh, will do the trick. Some maybe loving here. So I need some love. And also like, hmm, yeah, that doesn't look right. There is a part here that, yeah, I'll we'll have to check this. And uh, so let me try with the disc. I do have here a floppy disc. So let's see what happens when we try to, okay. mechanism doesn't look too great not very familiarized with this particular so this is the head actually that I'm moving here so I have to disassemble this I think yeah so this is the automated ejecting mechanism and This doesn't look like too straightforward to disassemble, to be honest. So yeah, some gooey, you know, like all the love going on here. Yeah, I'm afraid if I disassemble this whole thing, like I uh, might break it or, you know, never be able to fully reassemble it back in, in its original state. And I really don't want to break this. Something 
doesn't look too right here, to be honest. This is the head, and on the light here, it looks like stitching. See? Yeah, it doesn't look too great. So I'm going to pause. Uh, I'm going to pause the video now, and uh, I'm going to work a little bit on that. See if I can, you know, like make it better. Maybe I do have some uh, looping paste that is uh, only for electronics that I used to use on my faders uh, on my keyboard here, so it might do the trick. Uh, but I need to understand better how the mechanism itself work. So uh, I will try that, and I will get back. Okay. So I got some stuff here that um, basically will will be helping me to. You know, like uh, clean this up. I, I just uh, I I've done like a thorough thorough like uh, examination on the mechanisms and uh, the insides. To be honest, uh, it does look okay. Like even the mechanism is working. Like uh, if I pop up a disc, for example, I can easily like eject it. So I don't know. It looks like it's just a matter of you know lubing and cleaning, and uh, hopefully this will be enough to make this. You know, uh, back into working state in no time. So what I've got here is, I got some paste lub here. This is uh, the oxid. It's basically like for um, for faders. So it's a fader grease. It's very good for electronics because it's uh, basically it's, um, even though it says lubricant for conductive plastic faders. It, it doesn't it's not actually conductive so it, it's really good like I have been using this a lot and it's it's amazing like it's really really good it is expensive though like uh, as you can see this is a very small pot like 28 grams and it goes for like a uh, quite a bit amount of money if you compare it like cheaper options but this is the thing this is really good um, I, I'm not getting paid for anything uh, not getting paid by coca-cola by the way this is only because I like drinking it that's all mm. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to be using this to loop some parts here. I have some vinegar here, like white vinegar, that I'm going to be using to try to rub off this um, uh, little oxidation that is in just this part here. So just to get rid of it, as you know, like um, oxidation is kind of like metal cancer. And uh, if you don't take care of it, it might spread up and, you know, get to other parts and we don't want that. So I'm going to basically try to rid of it and vinegar is really your best friends uh, your best friend in scenarios like that and uh, so I have some uh, very um, uh, mild sandpaper here that I'm going to use to basically try to scrub this uh, oxidation out of this spot here and that's it so let's see if we can get this um, back into working condition just by cleaning it up and uh, reassembling it so I will start with trying to get uh, to this uh, out uh, this oxidation point out here so I have some uh, swaps that I use uh, basically for this purpose so uh, those are actually much better than those uh, cotton swaps that you get on, on pharmacies because it's way more uh, resistant and uh, the tip is not uh, cotton based so it's also more resistant and uh, it's easier to get to the you know like um, some difficult parts because it's as you can see like the shape is is flat right so let's just you know like a little bit of vinegar here and just scrub this with vinegar you know just uh, a little bit on the parts that are affected by the oxidation my impression is that at some point this got you know like uh, maybe wet a little bit or maybe moist so it's not really like a, a big deal because it's only in this part here again nothing else seems to be affected by this and it's coming off actually very easy so uh, when you know like dealing with uh, vinegar you have to be careful not to uh, let the vinegar actually reach uh, parts that are not intended for the vinegar to be because we are talking about sensitive electronics here so vinegar can corrode uh, some portions of it and you really don't want that 
so be careful with vinegar like if you are using vinegar you have to be sure to remove it afterwards don't leave it and by the way vinegar is also great for uh, battery leakage so whenever you have like a piece of electronic that has been damaged by battery leakage which is fairly common in older like uh, computers and such vinegar is really really amazing it neutralizes the acid on the battery fairly fast and uh, so it's it's really like a great thing to have again you have to remember to clean it up afterwards otherwise the vinegar might start actually corroding some other parts so you really don't want this as you can see like just by the color of the swab here it is like basically working right Hopefully the background music is not too loud. Just like to work with some music, that's all. Like, and since this is going to be a fairly long job, I really want to, you know, keep listening to some music while I'm on it. Okay, so it's it's much better already. I can I can see it. So I think maybe if I use the the sandpaper now. It might help so again this is almost like a water uh, sandpaper like it's it's really like thin and very very mild and uh, so just to polish the affected area here by removing oh, it's perfect you see like it's gone it's already gone so same thing on the other ones here and then like another section of uh, you know vinegar cleaning and we are pretty much done like that's all we need to do really I will show you like in a close-up afterwards the result and you're going to see how amazing this looks like uh... so a little bit more vinegar here I'm going to use the same swab like I'm not gonna change it So, yeah, again, like the swab is great because it doesn't really deteriorate. Like if this was cotton swab, like it would be a mess already. Yeah, this is great. Like uh, it's all gone. Yep. So a tiny bit still here. So I'm just going to make sure like there's nothing, really nothing left again because this is really like a metal cancer and I really don't want to have any tiny bit of corrosion going on here. There's some in the inside here. It's almost like, you know, like using dental floss on the metal. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so that that is enough, I think. Like, I'm happy with it. So as you can see, hopefully you can see it. Like, uh, on this, those are the three parts affected by the corrosion. And uh, it looks much, much better now perfect but uh, again it's good enough for me so I'm going to use another swab now those this is isopropyl alcohol pure like 99% so very pure alcohol great again for cleaning up electronics so I'm just going to final touch here on the affected area just to remove the vinegar make sure everything is actually very clean and I'm actually going to be using this to clean up the components as well, like everything else. Hmm. Okay, I can see some corrosion on the inside here as well. Haven't actually saw that before, so I will have to do some work here.
Yep, that's doing the trick. Just patience, you know, like, and just keep going. Again, if I was using like a, a, a more uh, aggressive uh, sandpaper type, uh, it would actually be faster, but the problem is uh, it's very abrasive and uh, it might, you know, uh, also like remove some of the metal along the way, which might cause it to be, you know, more fragile. And on those old, old computers, you, you really don't want to, you know, make anything more fragile. Yeah, that's great. A little bit of vinegar here as well. And the final touch, alcohol, to remove the vinegar and make everything very clean and ready to go. Yeah, that looks much, much better. Like, again, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, this really looks great. Okay, now, for the cleaning, I'm actually going to change the swab because this one has uh, a bit of, you know, oxidation on it, and you don't want to spread this around. So a clean swab, more alcohol here, and let's start the cleaning. So I'm going to actually go through every single part internal part here internal component so it's starting on the landing portion of the floppy here so just remove the dust the grime and everything like it is you have to be patient basically right I make sure that you go like uh, there are some coils here you know like springs so just Go and clean everything up. Those are important components for the mechanism to actually work as expected. And uh, they need to be very clean and some of them also loved. So you have to also do some loving, uh, lubricating, you know, afterwards. So this is the molder that I'm cleaning right now. Again, not sure whether or not the camera is going to be able to pick this up or if it's going to focus on it. But, um, I'm going to be describing what I'm doing. So this is the molder that I'm uh, cleaning, the molder plate right here. So this is basically where the disc is going to sit, right? The floppy disc. I'm going to show you the swab afterwards. You're going to see the color of it. And then you're going to see the importance of a good throughout cleaning. On the sides. So look at this. So this, again, this is from, uh, just so you know, like this is from July 1984, right? So we are talking about like 30 or so years, uh, 30 plus years of, uh, you know, grime and dust uh, that has been deposited here and uh, it's just accumulating over the years. So not surprisingly, this is not working. To be honest, like uh, sometimes uh, that's... One amazing thing about retro uh, vintage computers like they just work out of the box even being like uh, 35 40 years old computers they just work which is amazing because nowadays you don't have this like uh, you buy a new computer it's going to be good only for i don't know maybe like five years or so and then it really like becomes trash it's almost like a disposable sort of electronic and that was not the case in the past so you really had really well constructed and built to last machines and that's not only for computers like that that was for everything like tv sets and uh, and such they basically lasted forever if you actually took good care of them this is so true that uh, you know we have this piece of machinery here like from the you know the 80s that is actually in very good shape it's not functional but uh it could be right like i have other pieces here that uh I didn't really have to do anything, and it just worked. So sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you have to do some work. And it's actually part of the fun, to be honest. Right, so you actually get to learn a lot as well along the way. Like, I didn't know anything about electronics when I started, like, uh, you know, uh, fixing those old computers, like recuperating them. And, uh, Still don't know anything to be honest, but at least now I, I know what a capacitor is. I know like uh, 
uh, how to replace them and I actually have learned a lot. I, I, I might say that I have come, I have came a long way. So yeah, it's, it's a nice hobby, you know, like very educational. So if you have the time, just go for it. So I'm going to, you know, like pause the video here because I really don't want to spend the, like, I don't want you guys to see me cleaning everything. When I am, uh, you know, about to apply the paste here, the, uh, the loving paste, I'll, I'll put the video back on. Okay. So just bear with me. I finished the cleanup. Um, now it's time for the, the lubri lubrication uh, actions, you know, like, uh, so I'm going to use a little bit of uh, WD-40 as well. Uh, some people don't recommend using WD-40 in uh, electrical, uh, electrical and electronic components because it's um, it basically is a, a magnet uh, for dust, you know, like uh, it, it becomes like a grime. And uh, But let's face it, like uh, any paste or any looks that you're going to be using basically are going to act the same way. Of course, uh, WD-40, because it's liquid, it tends to, uh, you know, spread a little uh, more in terms of uh, also carrying the dust around. So uh, I still use it and on certain parts, not everything, but uh, because it also protects the metals and uh, it, it's non-conductive, so it's actually very good for most uh, applications. So I'm going to just uh, get a swab here and uh, spray a little bit of WD-40 on it. And I'm just going to go around like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, not too much. Just enough. Yep. Good. And I'm just going to go around like, uh, you know, like passing this. I have a disc in place here just so that mechanism is actually um, functioning and, uh, and I have access, you know, easier to also some other components. So, for example, the springs, I'm going to use WD-40 on them. Pretty much all the springs, I'm going to WD-40 the hell out of them because, uh, again, those are the type of components that really benefit from this. Um, you can't get anywhere near, you know, the, the heads uh, with WD-40. This will be very, very bad for them, so never, ever do that. It's going to ruin your drive. But all the moving parts, like mechanical parts and springs and such, yeah, by all means, like, uh, at least I do it, so I don't really care. So again, like you see springs here, I'm not going to use lube on the screen, uh, on the springs. So I'm just WD-40, plain and simple. Oi. Oi. So those are the moving parts, you see? So those are the actual components that makes the disc eject and such. So I'm also going to use some, I'm actually going to use some paste here as well, but uh, some spring. So on all the moving parts, a little bit of WD-40, you know, just I'm also going to put a little bit on that part that was affected by the corrosion because again WD-40 is great for that. It protects against further damage. Okay, good. More springs here. So a little more WD-40 there as well. And here. Again, not too much. So you don't get this actually like, uh, you know, running or anything like that. So just a little bit, just to coat it. And that's actually what we are doing here, just coating the whole thing, which is enough. Yeah. So on this side, we have, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. All right, that should do the trick. Okay. so. Look at the color again, not good. And now for the paste. So this is the paste and I'm going to be using a little brush. 
right and just picking like a very tiny bit piece of this like this and I'm going to be putting that on the head uh, uh, how can I, how do I call this like a the, the heads uh, the head mechanism yeah all right so a little bit of paste here then it's just a matter of moving this around a few times so that the paste actually do its work and I will also be using the paste on the moving parts here so just a tiny bit of paste I think I'm actually going to be using because this brush is actually very hardened already so I'm going to be using like a swab for that yeah it's much better you know to get this on the places it needs to be again be careful you know whenever you're looking like uh, make sure it doesn't get too close to the, the head or anything like that because if it does it will ruin it and there is no way in hell we're going to be able to clean it up afterwards so I'm just put on the places that there is like metal to metal contact or plastic to plastic moving parts that is what you need. Yeah. Okay, so a little more WD 40 here. smell is not great you know so just uh, you know loading the the end the motor here like the the engines making sure that they are very well lubricated and there is also the internal parts here see it looks better already to be honest yeah there is some moving parts here see that might benefit from a little bit of have to be careful because this is very close contact to the disc yeah looking great there is a spring here that I need to coat with WD-40 as well and also like some moving components here look at that hmm? the miracle of you no know, lubrication or lubrication sorry not lubrification yeah that looks good like I'm happy with that I think there is a good chance that this will be working after all okay here as well on it. Yeah, here. Okay. 
Okay, finishing this up. Oh yes, I'm here. Some moving parts here as well that might need some assistance of the looping. Again, don't don't get too carried away. Otherwise, uh, chances are you will be, you know, like putting the loop into places where you should not be, and that will ruin your desk. So, I think uh, for the mechanical parts and the electronic components, that's it. So next step is basically like I'm going to deal with the cable and the case. Like I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to move the camera to the place where I'm going to be doing that, and you get to see the technique that I use. And then we're going to reassemble everything and hope for the best. So, bear with me. Now we are on the plastics here and I'm going to start cleaning this up. Again, like it's very dirty as you can see, especially here, a lot of dust. Uh, in this one we have that spider nest in here, right? So I'm going to, it's not too bad actually, just going to, you know, like uh, do a thorough cleaning. I think this part actually gets... Uh, it can be taken apart, maybe. So, just don't want to break anything. Yeah, that, that was easy. Okay, so we have the parts here, and I'm just going to work on that. Uh, I wanted to show you this. So, this is uh, basically what I use to clean up all the plastics. Like, um, the plastics for the this old... Uh, you know computers like I do this on all the plastics and uh, it works beautifully and uh, it removes like even small scratches it's a little abrasive but most of the time it doesn't you know uh, damage the texture or anything on the plastic so it's it works fairly well okay so let's get on with the cleaning here so I'm going to just uh, wash this a little bit first so actually let me get some so I get always like a toothbrush, a very old toothbrush that I use, just to, you know, like uh, scrap the, the things out and then get uh, some detergent, mild detergent to, uh, you know, like uh, soap or whatever it is, like to clean this up. And then I use the magic eraser to uh, get rid of the mild scratches and uh, uh, stains and such. Okay. So, uh, this is like a dishwasher or a detergent, so it's uh, just regular dishwasher detergent, detergent, nothing special here. So I'm going to start with this one that has this Naya spider whatever here. So again, like even without water, I'm just going to, you know, like scrap this up. So first get rid of the dust. And always before water, I think, because at least, you know, like, uh, it doesn't become like, it becomes like a paste or anything. And here as well. So this is a lot of dust. So very easy to just dislodge the dust. Ideally, I will have like a brush here to help me out. But since I'm going to wash this anyways, like I don't really care. It's more like to dislodge the larger amount of dust and then water and regular wash up. That's pretty much it. Like uh, there is no secret whatsoever. So as you can see, like there are some small uh, marks. So let me see if the camera focuses. There is a small small mark here and the uh, magic eraser is going to get rid of it for sure. So let's rearrange the focus here now. Yeah, good. And so the water is uh, slightly warm, which really helps with uh, the cleaning process. I am just use my hands. Normally you can use a sponge. Well, maybe a sponge. 
in here. Like this sponge, I don't recommend because it, it is abrasive on this side here. So use the soft side. Uh, the abrasive side is nice again, like to get rid of uh, small scratches and such. But uh, if you actually use it too, uh, if you use a lot of effort, it will damage the plastic. It happened to me in the past. It really damages, like uh, this part here of the sponge. It's really damaging to to the plastics. It's very, very abrasive. Like, uh, you don't tell, but it is. Okay, so always with a lot of patience. Patience. Right. Don't use a lot of. Uh, uh, strength, just uh, take your time and go over everything like this. You see that there are a lot of tabs here. If you actually move the sponge very roughly, it, it will basically remove those. And you need them to basically get everything in place. So be careful. That goes for everything. Like I'm um, just giving an example with this particular one. But some people remove the labels before washing, like I don't really care because most of the time the labels are just going to stick, like they don't really get damaged unless you let this soak in water or if you're doing like retrovirating or something like this, then yes, uh, by all means remove it because retrovirating is going to damage the labels and you really don't want this. So, last one, it's the larger. Same process, again like using the non-abrasive part of the sponge. Take good care not to break any of the tabs or anything. And this is like a very old component. You really want to take good care of it. Don't let it rush, you know, like ruin experience for you. So let's just mix a little bit of colder water here. Never use, uh, you know, like uh, too hot water. It does deform the plastic sometimes. Like normally ABS plastic, it should be fine, but uh, yeah, it could, uh, you know, like uh, deform the plastic if the water is way too high. As you can see, like uh, just by washing it, it didn't really get rid of the mark here. So again, this is actually a good case for the magic eraser. And that's pretty much it. Like, uh, as you can see, it is a little bit yellow and I will not retrovite this. Again, I'm not a big fan of retrovriting. I really do think that it, uh, it causes some damage to the plastic in the long term, even on a medium uh, term. So yeah, I'm not really a fan of it. So this is the magic razor. I'm going to start like, uh, for the, with the magic razor, you might want to have some care with the, the label because it might brush it off. So I just use the magic razor here just to, you know, like uh, remove any deeper, uh, just to give an example, like look at the feet here, right? Uh, so if I actually use the magic razor on the feet, You can see already some improvement, yeah. So yeah, look at that. Good as new, right? So it's very powerful. Like uh, again, like uh, look at the grind here. And uh, I'm actually going to leave the food for for the, the last, right? Otherwise, it's going to ruin my sponge here. So just uh, through all, like good use of the magic razor overall. Again, don't apply too much pressure. Like it is abrasive, uh, mildly abrasive, but still like, uh, and you really don't want to, you know, like force it in any way. Okay, so this one here is already done. I'm going to go back to the feet here uh, to do the same thing as I did on this one. So I'm going to leave it here for now. So this is the one that has that mark right here. So this is the mark. Uh, I know it. Maybe you can see it from here, but I showed you in the zoom uh, before, right? So, so as we pass this here, 
again, like you have to be a little bit patient. And little by little, it will start basically getting a little bit better up to a point where it should disappear altogether. I am using like a little bit of a strength here. Again, you have to be a little bit careful because, and if you're going to do something like that, you will have to do it on the whole thing to even it out because since this is a little bit yellow, because this is abrasive, right? When you start moving the sponge, you are eventually removing very thin layer of the material which will eventually cause some color um, difference uh, never had any issues with that but you know just to be safe like I always uh, try to move the magic eraser like uh, everywhere along the plastic not only on the place that I am almost gone again like moving it everywhere else just to make sure I don't see any differences and back to the spot here just a tiny bit and And it's gone, totally gone. That's it. It's not too bad. Yeah, this side here is a little bit more yellow than the rest, probably because this was, uh, you know, sitting on a window and uh, the light, the sunlight was hitting this uh, more frequently than the other sides. And again, I don't really care it's not too yellow it's just a little bit and uh, it doesn't really bother me and again this actually tells the story of whatever it is that you have like of course there are cases where you buy it and it's way too yellow you know really really yellow and in those cases i really don't like especially uh, if the machine was sitting in places where people were smoking you know in those cases yes maybe retro writing is the way to go and, uh, but other than that, like I don't do it. So here, you can see it was here, right? And uh, just going to focus, there is nothing left. It's gone. So yeah, that's it. So I'm just going to, you know, like uh, reassemble everything. Actually let it uh, dry, of course. Still using the magic razor here just to, you know, like, uh, remove any marks or anything. It's not really visible anything here because it's very clean anyways, but just to be consistent, right? Just using it overall. So yeah, you can see that this side here is the, it's more yellow than the rest. And again, I don't really care. If you're using the magic razor, uh, make sure to wash it afterwards because uh, it does have some products on it and uh, you don't want to leave it uh, just in the in the plastic that's it so i'm done uh it's over so i'm going to reassemble everything we test it and we hope for the best stick with me so i have uh i have already uh cleaned all the plastics and everything so now it's time for the reassembly. Uh, so let's just start with the, the drive here. So I have no clue how this goes, but uh, judging by the format, right? It looks like this is the proper way. Uh, what I do when, whenever in doubt, if I don't really remember is, I actually go back to the video that I recorded and uh, figure it out. So this is also why it's always a good idea, you know, to record a video really shows you the way whenever you are lost okay so 
if I remember correctly, the um, the screw should be here on this side. I'm not entirely sure, but we can look at the marks in the metal basically to give us some hints about where we should be going. So there is a slight mark here which tells me that probably this is the right place. So let me just check the other sides, just to make sure. Yeah, there's no openings here. No, to be honest, that's the really only one. There is no other uh, hole, so that's pretty much it. Okay, so um, now back to the case. So this is the case uh, finished in terms of, uh, you know, the cleaning so it looks very clean very neat so this look at the feet here as you can see like uh, looks like new right and uh, as you can see the label wasn't damaged at all in the process which is great okay so let's see if I remember how to put this back together Okay, so there are some screws that goes. So this is the front of it, which means it has to go like this, right? Just have to make sure I align the openings here, like this. Okay. So maybe, um, yeah, so I can't screw anything because of this here. So I first need to assemble everything and then I get to screw everything back in place or maybe I could screw like the four screws that holds the unit together first yes and they are perfectly aligned which is great so the screws are all the same size which always help so yeah good times when Apple used to you know do something like this nowadays uh, if you take like a more modern uh, Apple device like a computer or a notebook disassembling them and reassembling and putting them back together is uh it's really a nightmare like uh, so many different screws and uh well of course things got more complex along the way right so that kind of uh, makes sense but still like sometimes i i have the impression that apple really, uh, doesn't care much about making our lives easier or for example their products are repairable well we all know that right don't get me wrong i like apple it's just that sometimes it's quite annoying what they do it's funny because i'm not not actually like an apple user uh modern apple user i don't use uh, like a, a power book or anything like that i don't i use a pc and again, uh, just, you know, don't agree with uh, the modern Apple policies. For example, like uh, the thing that uh, just came, uh, you know, public uh, recently that um, they actually, whenever you update the software to an iPhone, uh, it actually slows down like all the models on purpose to force you to buy like newer models. This is criminal, isn't it? Like, uh, this is really not the way to sell products or to push them uh, onto the general public like uh no i don't i don't agree with that i really can't like uh nobody can agree with that i think okay so i can't forget to uh plug uh the the harness in before closing this up right and i think i will have to first put this in place as well just like I did before disassembling it. It was easy, much easier than when I turned it apart. Maybe because it was actually here. Yeah, that is the case. So yeah, the clips are here actually in this, in this one. So maybe, I think this is the last part that I should be putting together, yeah. So let's put the harness on. So, 
harness will go here. I, I also clean it, by the way, like I forgot to show you on the video, but uh, I clean everything up. So this goes here, and this one goes there. Easy enough. Just making sure it's actually in place. Good. Now uh, place the harness in its spot, which is here, actually like this. And making sure that the harness will not be uh, in the way when I place the top case in place, right? So like this probably should do the trick. Okay, and now this part goes in here like this. Perfect match as expected. Yep. And now I think I can put the the final two screws in place here. Well, let's just hope this works because, uh, well, I have to be honest, like if it doesn't, uh, there is not much else I can do. Like uh, even replacing with the Macintosh SE uh, floppy drive might be doable, but it's going to be really hard, you know, because um, the drives, I think, are different sizes. I mean, physical sizes, maybe, or at least enclosure is. So that means that we have to disassemble the whole thing and... Uh, yeah chances are if i try to do it i will get it wrong uh, whenever i try to reassemble it i only disassemble those elements when there is no other option really uh, other than that like uh, chances are if i do it uh, i'm pretty much sure that uh, if i try to reassemble it afterwards like uh, there will be some sort of an issue so this goes like this Right, so just a little pressure here again be careful not to break the plastic or anything and there you go like uh, you see that the yellow actually has uh, improved a little bit just by the cleaning just cleaning it up it's enough to you know like improve the yellowing at some levels so let me actually go over with uh, some alcohol here because I still see some uh, small spots It should be easy enough to remove them like a uh, magic sponge would do the trick here it's just that i didn't see it when i was uh, cleaning everything up yeah that's okay okay that's good enough okay now is uh it's time for the testing so i'm going to move the camera uh, onto my mac plus here and uh and then we can see this uh, whether or not this works okay uh, bear in mind this is a um, 400k floppy uh, drive which means it won't work with uh, 800k formatted disks or of course like 1.4 uh, so it's uh, you have to make sure that the disk that you have is compatible and uh, if it is uh, just giving you like a message saying that uh, you need to format the disk just do it and uh, that should be enough to make it work if the mechanism is fully functional, like the heads are clean and everything else. I truly hope it is. Um, I think I've done like a very decent job here, like it really looks great. Uh, let me see if uh, the disc is aligned. Uh, yeah, it does look fine. It wasn't before, by the way, like I should have shown the, when you actually try to insert a floppy here before, it. It, it wasn't going like easily at least now I can see very smoothness into the process okay so let me move the camera and uh, I'll be back I uh, I already installed uh, the drive haven't turned it off yet so it's plugged into the uh, floppy disk uh, port in the back of my Mac plus here I just put it on top of my uh, existing SCSI uh, zip disk and uh, this is actually, uh, it's any uh, just drive enclosure but 
this is uh, the SCSI to SD uh, um, card that is inside of it. So I, I have another video actually talking only about this one here. So the Mac Plus is actually booting out of this guy here on the down, on the uh, on the bottom. You're going to see it. I'm going to power this up. We're going to test the floppy drive. I'm going to use. Uh, this is a 400k formatted flop uh, floppy. So I'm going to test it first on the original uh, disk drive on my Mac Plus, and then we're going to uh, run a test on the newly refurbished uh, external floppy drive here. So there we go. Putting it up, as you can see, like uh, it's this guy down here is actually powered directly from the SCSI. Again, I have a video on that, how to actually enable this on the Mac Plus. Um, it's very handy because the Mac Plus doesn't have an internal SCSI or any other sort of a hard disk. So either you have to boot out of flop floppies or uh, you can use something like this. And it's really handy because, um, again, it's very flexible. I can basically use this on any other Macs that I have to transfer files. So yeah, it makes my life so much easier when uh, you're talking about uh, the Mac Plus. So yes, it's, uh, as you can see, it's booting up out of the SCSI element here. So this is my, uh, my SCSI to SD, uh, the SD card actually that is inside of this guy here. So let's test this on the built-in floppy, should work. So it reads, and if I open this up, this is like a 400K basically like a disk. So let me just uh, remove this so we can recopy it uh, using the new floppy if the new floppy is good. So yeah, it's 400K now. I don't know if you, you can read this, but uh, it is 400K showing here. Let me see if I can adjust the focus maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit darker, but I think the focus now is a bit more, uh, well, you got the point. So let's eject this disk. And now the moment of truth. Let's see if this works on the newly uh, refurbished floppy drive. Very noisy. Hmm. So apparently it's not recognizing it. So let's try to reform it. So let's see if by reformatting it, it makes it, uh, you know, more functional. I don't know. So let's hope for the best. At least now, you know, like uh, I can insert the floppy. It, I wasn't able to do that before. The mechanism was a very, you know, like, uh, well, I showed you in the process of refurbishing this. It was uh, very sticky and uh, it wasn't working as I expected at all. So let's see if... Uh, we can reformat this guy and use it. So apparently, you know, like the, at least the writing head seems to be, well, it didn't do anything, did it? So yeah, I'm not seeing the disk on the desktop here. So let me try to reboot this. And see what happens. trying to boot out of the floppy so well the eject mechanism is working which is great so let's try it one more time so I'm going to push the floppy in so yeah it doesn't like the disk so I do have other disks here that I can try so I'm not sure whether or not this, so let's try to use the built-in floppy. So let's see what happens. Hmm. So I'm going to uh, initialize it as one-sided. Erase. Let's name it test. So this is now formatting on the internal built-in floppy drive on the Mac Plus. So hopefully this will do the trick. If not, then well, basically the drive is busted like this one here. Um, 
unfortunately. Then now I will see if I can maybe like uh, you know transplant the the other one that I got from a Mac SE into this uh, enclosure. Maybe it will work. I don't know. But this is another project. And uh, okay, so this is the one that I just formatted from the internal. So it's 400k. It should be compatible with the external drive. So yeah, it doesn't read it. So yeah, this is really a shame. Like it doesn't seem to be working at all. So let me try to remove it and reattach it. Maybe that will make a difference or something. I don't know. Okay, so it's installed again. Yeah, <laughs> go figure now, it works now, see? So, yeah, I don't know why, really. So let me try to copy something onto it. So let's try the, yeah, the Apple page. So, so let's try speed disk here. Let's see, this is 160K. So it should be a good test. And the final test is I will try to reformat this disk onto this drive and then try to move it from uh, to the other one. Okay, so apparently it did copy. So let's, yeah, it's here. So let's eject this and see if I can read it on the built-in floppy drive here. Okay, so it mounts and I can see speed disk here, which is great. Okay, so the final task is formatting the drive now onto the external. So far so good, so um, erase disk, initialize. So let's see what happens now so if that works then I'm happy you know like uh, to be honest I wasn't really expecting this to work at all so I'm already happy to be honest it's very noisy because I think the motor you know that is actually spinning the the floppy here is uh, it's actually making a lot of noise and I don't really see if I can uh, improve that because again I think maybe that the way this was built in the first place Okay, so it's finishing the formatting. So let's see if it, uh, okay, so it mounted, which is great, empty. So let me again try to copy something here. So let's try something a little bit bigger now. So HTT primer. So this is a 256K file. So let's see how that goes. Okay, apparently it's going. No strange noises or anything. At least not that I can hear. Yeah, I think it will be okay. And uh, let me try afterwards, uh, just... Uh, so, I will try also to reboot. So this is HTT Primer, copy onto the disk. So again, like ejected, tested on the internal. See if it mounts and if I can read the content. So this is always a good test. Yeah, it looks okay. Yeah, it's there. Good. So the final task that I have now is basically I'm going to eject this. I'm going to reboot the Mac Plus. Actually, I'm going to shut it down. And then back, I'm going to power it on again. Because I really want to see if um, there was anything... Uh, because I had to unplug the the hard uh, the floppy drive, reattached it, and then it worked. So I'm wondering if there is any sort of you know electrical, you know problems that uh, might be happening when I power this up 
and uh, it energizes this from the port. I don't know. So let's see. Booting it back up. So let's wait for it to boot. Okay, so yeah, this is like I'm going to make a video afterwards uh, only talking about the Mac Plus. Uh, this is a beautiful machine. Like I uh, was again very lucky to get this one uh, for nearly nothing. I actually got this and a Mac SC both for around like 30 bucks. And uh, the Mac SC and both are, were actually working just uh, it needed like some caps replacing and you know the, tra the traditional stuff. But uh, in the end it was in good shape. So, so let's, let's, let's test it. There we go. It still works. Perfect. So I think that concludes the test. Very happy. So I have a functioning external floppy drive, which is amazing. Really? Like I'm amazed with myself, to be honest. Wasn't expecting this actually to work, as I said. And that's it. So that concludes the video, guys. So stick uh you know with me for upcoming videos like i'm trying to make more videos as i go like uh, whenever i have to repair something like this or talk about the machines that i have uh, well there's a lot of things for me to talk about in this particular room so yeah let's get on with that thank you for watching and again like uh, if you like the content please subscribe of course thank you bye